Uh, today is uh, June 19th, 2010, and here we are at the Blender Institute. It is a, it is a Saturday. It is, and <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm working on this shot, uh, which takes place in the market scene. And as you can see, it's got some issues. Namely, the shadow on her shoulder. And if you look carefully, there are some uh, shadow butter buffer artifacts caused by her hair. So basically, we thought it would be a cool idea to show you the system that we have set up here, because it's quite awesome. Mm. And Campbell did a lot of work to set it up. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the awesome bit, but it's, it works for us, which is it's good. And a lot of people have been asking about how our render farm works, so we thought it would be worth just showing you guys, doing a walkthrough. Absolutely. So here's, uh, here's how it works. You want to hold the camera real quick? Okay, yeah, you... We'll just start from the beginning of the process Are and then Are you really go in. recording? Yes. Okay. So, um, I've brightened up <laughs> the, background, <laughs> the background a little bit. Um, Could have said anyway, that. I'm going to stop this render because it's basically ready to go to the farm. So, as you see, the uh, file name is, uh, this is the directory, and this is the, the name. So, I'm going to go to this nice widget. Uh, well, first, I will commit the file. So, using the terminal. <coughs> it's awesome that it, um, the camera recognizes Intel's face. It's so oh, yeah. photorealistic. It focuses <laughs> on her on I don't her face. think anyone else will see that, though. No, I can see it on the little viewfinder, though. It's oh, pretty that's, cool. That's cool. Um, so, SVNCI. And what I'm basically doing is committing this file, ooh, as well as some others, comp, posit, work on a market scene. Commit, transmitting file data. So this is taking the file that we have that I've been working on locally and uploading it to the server so that when the render farm nodes update, they will be, they'll have all of the same blend files that I've been working on. So then there's this dream farm uh, little logo on the desktop. And come on. Bam. Okay, okay, so this is how we access the render farm. This is a user interface that Brecht wrote. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's right. And um, basically, these are all different shots that have been put through the farm. As you see, many of them are done. Some of them are rendered in 2K, some of them 1K. Uh, this is the revision number, SVN revision number. And these are the uh, sort of the, uh, what do you call this? Just basically render times. Yeah. So average time per frame and maximum per shot. So some of these are 20, you know, 22 minutes, 27 minutes, 41 minutes. Some of them are, are a lot shorter. So, anyway, and then we've got, if you scroll down here, no, the latest sure render, the game. and here are all the line. render nodes we have working for this. Holy crap. So, we've got all of our individual computers, the 16 nodes on the Justa cluster, as well as these six Dells that were just donated to us. Uh, so we've got quite some, quite some power. Okay, so all I'm going to do is type in the shot name. That's the, the path. Submit it. I want to render it in 2K. Add job. It should be added to the end of the list. You can cut. Bam! <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'll just enable it, and there's 91 frames in the shot, and very soon, that will be uh, just rendered. So, okay. what do you say we show them the render farm? I'll let Sounds you good. The, the tour. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, how about we we go to where the render farm used to be? Okay. Just because. Uh, so this is the room where we used to have a cabinet here with 16 computers and it got really hot and you can see these holes in the wall we had air pumping out there that the neighbors complained about so we had to move it into this other place <laughs> there's the 
temperature. It's important we know how hot this room is. Uh, what is that in, in Fahrenheit? Uh, no idea. <laughs> uh, it's loud. Yeah, it's really loud. I'll just move this. This used to be the blender e shop. Yeah. Okay, so we'll first look at these ones. I think it's. This is the Duster cluster, and this is what what we've been using for the for the most part. A 16 motherboards. You can like do a nice nice shot down of all the different all the computers. So they're all the same motherboards. Pretty stock standard hardware. Um, quad core i7s that run Blender really fast. Uh, they don't really overheat too much, except we've got the drawers sort of uh, alternately pulled out just so there's a bit of air space between them. Um, you can put your hand on them and feel. If it burns you, you know it's getting a bit too hot. These are not burning me <laughs> right now. Um, so there's actually the four different drawers. Yeah, four drawers with four nodes. Um, air conditioner here, keep it cool. So we have two air conditioners right now? Yeah, and we'll have a shower. <laughs> Which is sort of dangerous, like, I don't know, this doesn't seem like a good idea. But anyway, okay. You, can you look under here? Yeah. You can see these numbers. These motherboards are kind of rare, but they have numbers here. Uh huh. Well, not so common, I haven't had one, owned one that does this, but they, when they boot up, you see the numbers sort of cycle up, and then when it loads up Debian, these are running Debian, uh -huh. numbers also cycle up so you can tell it's booted. They have no graphics cards, and these motherboards happen to work pretty well, or they work fine without graphics cards, so... Gotcha. These computers were recently lent to us by Dell. There's uh, six... six... Uh, dual Xeons, so eight cores in total. And, uh, well, it's not really very interesting, but they're running stock standard Ubuntu. Uh, I don't really know what to say, probably edit that. How do you, out. like, log, log onto this, or how do you control these things? Well, I mean, you've set this all up. How does yeah, that work? Yeah, uh, I just, well, you look here, each one of these has a, almost all of them, has a, deb, uh, a Ubuntu CD. So <laughs> I just installed them really stupidly without using Clonezilla or anything fun like that. If there was 20, I might have done something tricky with the hard disks and cloning them, but with 6, it's not really that much of a problem to install 6. Uh -huh. And uh, this monitor and keyboard, you can plug into any of them. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Can you control all, all uh, 6 of them at the same time? Yes. There is supposed to be a KVM, which you can switch between them, uh -huh. but I couldn't they didn't give us enough cables or something, so I couldn't use the KVM. So I had to install all of them manually and run around the back and like have earplugs because it's so noisy here. <laughs> and then once I got SSH installed, I can use cluster SSH to control all of them at once Very from cool. the command line. That's amazing. But actually, show yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Show me something. Well, not here because I've got okay. one here. Right, right. So if I want to. What's the other uh, air conditioning? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can see here I've got a, this is a, a desktop into the server and it means I can reboot my computer and just have this desktop um, running continuously for weeks and weeks. But there's a really cool... I'm confused. Say that again. Okay. Uh, there's my normal workstation, which is just, a, I've got a standard Ubuntu here. Right. But I can also open up this VNC client and that logs into the server so mm -hmm. I'm actually using the server. Uh. So if I full screen it's it's like it's my own desktop but it's actually running on the server and from here I do things like uh, log into every machine at once. I've got a Python script which is quite simple and you can log into 16 computers all at once <laughs> which is really useful when you want to do things like I don't know, top you can what <laughs> run statistics and see how much CPU each is using. Mm -hmm. um, or you can do system administration stuff like startup daemons or update SVN, check things, do whatever you want to do. I mean, it's that's cool. It's not usually that I, I don't usually use it, but it's um, it's 
good to have sometimes when you want to run things and not type it in on 16 computers because it's a real hassle. That's awesome. And the actual like uh, back end of the farm, that's just a, a Python script or something? Yeah, this is something which we're a bit ashamed about. You see, uh, it's pretty sad because uh, I wrote this really crappy render farm. It was something like the Big Buck Bunny render farm ported or just a few changes made to run on our own systems because I knew that and it was really basic. It took like four days or something to do this. And then uh, Tom wanted to have a better render farm which had all the nice user interface and things like this and uh, I disagreed. I thought this was a waste of time, you know, having a good render farm. So uh, Brett said he'd try and he got tried to use uh, NetRender which is a render farm in Blender and he couldn't get that working for us because we have SVN integration and all sorts of specific Durian features. So then he took my render farm and put a website on the front of it and then did a few other changes internally. So now we both work on the render farm a bit. It's kind of both our own project, but uh, we didn't achieve the goal to have a render farm for Durian that other people could use, which is a, which is a real shame. But uh, you know, we've got to make a movie. We've got to get it working for ourselves. So that's... That's yeah. the main thing. Well, what are the future plans for, uh, for the render farm? Do you, do you know? Or what's after Durian? Is this uh, all these computers going away? Or? Yeah, well, we've got all these computers now. And it's sort of stupid to have them and not use them. I think they use like $1,000 electricity a month, though. So it's also stupid to just like, let people render on it for free. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's the render farm software, which can still keep being used. So I guess people who do Blender projects may be able to use it. Uh, but as for the render farm software, it probably will just, I mean, we'll release it, of course, but it's not something people are likely to use. Um, on the other hand, issuing SSH commands from a central Python script, it's like 100 lines of code, and anyone can do that. It's not really rocket science what we're doing with the render farm, so people might just like to look at our scripts and use it as an example for their own simple render farm. Hmm. I guess uh, Tan's going to have to have the final word on, uh, on you know, whether or not uh, it's like opened up to the community or... or oh no, it'll be opened up. The, As I mean, the, code I mean, will be the actual, up. actual computers, the, uh, the, the farm. Yeah, that's... who knows. Yeah. It's also just a management nightmare, like you pull in people's files from everywhere and which ones do you render first, who gets what priority, what happens if they don't render, who do you contact, it's like yeah. a job to actually manage all this stuff. Yeah, it'd be exciting though, I mean, to have access to this kind of thing. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. But not exciting for the person who has to give you access. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, anything else we should show? Uh, hmm. I don't think that's, I think that's all, really. Oh, no. Hang on. What? Progress bar. So you can, you can show it without showing the whole image. Yep. So what we have here is a, a screen that's always on with the last frame rendered from the farm. Apparently, we can get a, one new frame every 30 seconds or something like this. Uh, this image you're not supposed to see because it sort of gives the way the story. But <laughs> there is this uh, Python script, about four lines of Python from memory, that tells us how many frames are final, how many frames we can actually put in the final movie. And how many frames are there in the, fi in the whole so movie? Like 17,500 or something. Yeah. Something hmm. around that. And um, so yeah, so this just counts them and then tells us how much percent of the movie has been rendered. Or it's final. It's pretty important. Excellent. So uh, the other cool thing that I wanted to mention is how uh, the farm automatically, when it's done with the render, um, compiles all the EXRs to uh, a PNG sequence. Uh, no, it doesn't. Is it JPEG? Whatever. And it also um, makes a 1K AVI file and commits it to our SVN. And in our SVN, we have a directory specifically for renders. And these are all the renders in the film. And uh, they're automatically committed by the farm. And so that, what that means is that uh, essentially, um, as soon as the render comes back from the farm, it's automatically updated in the animatic. So basically every morning or whatever, I just update SVN and I scrub through and I see new renders. And it's uh, quite cool. And it's made a huge, huge difference in our productivity um, just because uh, we see entire shots, not just 
still frames um, updated pretty much on a constant basis. So the farm is always running. And it's a really big deal if, if suddenly uh, the farm runs out of work.